Is modesty in dress being overemphasized? It is indeed a sad commentary on our present generation, on the situation that we find ourselves in today, that this topic of modesty, of thni'uth, needs to be discussed at all. It was once the case that to all Jews, men and women, it was obvious, it was self-evident that modesty in dress was something to be desired, something to be uh, taken very seriously, something that people uh, certainly would not consider extraneous to or some kind of minor issue uh, in Judaism. In fact, I have heard some people today, nowadays, say that uh, this whole business of modesty has been uh, is overrated and uh, too many people talk about it and emphasize it too much. Too much focus is placed on this issue when it's really it's not the most important thing in Judaism and uh, many other things are, are more important. However, I would answer such people that in effect what these people really think Perhaps they are somewhat embarrassed still to admit uh, and to state plainly what they feel and what they believe. But what these people really think is that this whole issue is not of an, any real importance, not certainly not central in, in uh, Torah Judaism. And, and really women should dress uh, and can dress and are allowed to dress any way they choose in any fashion. Uh, copying any and all manner of uh, fashions from the nations of the world and that uh, other Jews should be accepting of this fact. It's their right, as it were, to dress as they see fit. And it's certainly not a big deal. To such people, I would reply that they have been very heavily and tragically influenced by foreign cultures and ideas, by practices which uh, have their source uh, in the ways of the Gentile world. And that which was once self-evident and intuitive amongst Jews is today something which needs to be explained. But these people's views have nothing to do with Judaism. And I'm not asking anyone to believe me about the importance of uh, thni'uth, of modesty, particularly with regards to women, also with regards to men, by the way, but particularly with regards to women. Uh, no one has to take my word for it. I suggest that we do, however, take Yeshayahu Hanavi's word for it. The prophet Isaiah speaks about this very topic at great length in the third chapter of the book of Yeshayahu, and obviously Yeshayahu thought this was something to speak about and to uh, bemoan and to point out that this kind of behavior will lead to punishment and leads to a debasement of Jewish society. In the first chapters of uh, Sefer Yeshayahu, the Navi speaks of and describes many aspects of um, improper behavior, uh, immoral behavior that was commonplace in the, uh, the country, in the land of Israel, in Yerushalayim, in Zion of his day. Yeshayahu lived in Yerushalayim. And he points out in the early chapters the uh, terribly unscrupulous and um, greedy behavior of the aristocracy, of the bureaucrats, of all the ruling classes, and how they crushed underfoot the simple people uh, and taxed them to death and stole from them and cared nothing for justice and fairness and equity. And then, in the same breath, Ishayel continues and speaks, uh, switches course as it were, but really it's all connected. Now, this is one of the important things to understand, that one form of degenerate behavior 
usually appears together with other forms of degenerate behavior. Immorality breeds immorality. Midoth uh, raoth, very negative character traits and, and behaviors uh, are almost always associated with other negative traits and, and uh, modalities of behavior. So when we see a nation, a society, uh, in a tailspin, morally speaking, spiritually speaking, it does not manifest itself in one area of public life, but rather it, it, manif it manifests itself in many areas, if not all areas, of public life. So we find in Yeshayahu and Peregimu, and I will read a couple of Pesukim here, all of a sudden, after having spoken about the politicians, the leaders, the aristocracy, those in charge, and, th and therefore those who set the tone for the rest of society, and he describes them as people who care only for bribes and money and material gain, he goes on to say, this is in Peregimu Pasuk Terza, in chapter 3, verse 16, Vayomer Adonai. Hashem said, Ya'an ki rovahu banot Sion, because the daughters of Sion, that is to say, the women of Yerushalayim, uh, are haughty. Watelachna netoyoth garon, and they walk with their heads tilted high. Um mesakkaroth anayim, and uh, with uh, their eyes glancing hither and thither and uh, hinting and uh, to people, or according to another interpretation, pretending not to see that which they see. In other words, we know that haughty people uh, tend to walk in the presence of others who are looking at them as if they don't notice them, uh, in order to uh, pretend that they don't care what other people think about them or what they, uh, if they look at them or not. But in fact, what they're doing is taking very careful note of exactly who looks at them and how much. Here, the Navi Nishayahu is describing the uh, behavior of, of women in Yerushalayim in his day, and he's describing their dress, their manner of um, wearing jewelry and other ornaments and uh, different articles of, of dress in order to attract attention, in order to uh, to ensure that everyone looks at them, everyone sees uh, what they have to offer, so to speak. And then Yishayahu continues in a, a number of Pesukim, which I think are quite unique in the Tanakh. He lists all manner of garments and accessories and ornaments that women would wear, with the uh, not with pure intentions at all, but quite the opposite, with with very uh, negative and uh, reprehensible intentions, namely to uh, show, show themselves off, to attract attention, to uh, 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 cause men to leer and stare at them, etc., etc. For example, uh, I quote, Yishayel speaks about Tif'ereth ha'achosim v'hashavisim v'hashaharonim Hanatifoth, Wahasheroth, Wahare Aloth, Hapeerim, Wahas Adoth, Wahakishurim, Uvatea Nefesh, Wala Hashim, Hatabaoth, when is Meha Af. And I'm only halfway through, I'm not even halfway through the, the, the list of, of garments and accessories and jewelry. Yeshayao obviously takes this matter very seriously. He goes on to say, Hamahalothoth, Wahamatafoth, Wahamitbahoth, Wahaharitim. Clearly, Ishayahu did not think that the behavior of many of the women in his day, which he saw with his own eyes in, in Yerushalayim, and which he clearly connects to the moral decay of the Jewish people in his time, and therefore he was also uh, had no choice but to tell the people, that because of this moral malaise that has infected all of, this, all of Jewish society, the aristocracy, 
the politicians, the bureaucrats, the leaders, the royal household, to which he, Ishmael, by the way, was related, and uh, and the and the women on the streets and in the and in the court and in the uh, houses of the aristocracy, etc. Ishmael felt compelled to stress at length, as I just uh, sh demonstrated now by reading those Pesukim, how negative and how uh, reprehensible such behavior is. And therefore, it cannot be ignored. And therefore, to say that people today, some people today are overstating the, the case and focusing on something which is deserving of, of much less uh, attention, this is entirely untrue. Rabbi Yitzhak Barbanel, in his Perush on Ishayahu, at the beginning of this section, he writes as follows. He speaks about the Benoth Sion, the women of Yerushalayim, Shehayu Ba'aloth Ga'awa, they were haughty. Now haughty here does not mean simply uh, lacking in modesty in the sense that they thought the world of themselves. Haughtiness here, Ga'awa here, has to do with uh, the desire uh, that is part and parcel, unfortunately, of uh, Western Gentile culture nowadays, and unfortunately has made great inroads into many parts of the uh, Jewish world nowadays. Gawa has to do with the desire to be seen, that is to say, to show off uh, their physical beauty, their their, lit quite literally, their bodily uh, uh, features in order to attract uh, the attention of men, in order to deliberately put themselves on display without any uh, kind of shame or, or modesty. As the Gemara points out, the word for garment in Hebrew, levush, uh, has to do with the concept of lo bush, that is to say, not to, uh, not to be shamed, not to be embarrassed. The purpose of levush, of a garment, is to cover rather and to hide rather than to display and to emphasize. We all know that today is quite the opposite, uh, as we will mention in a moment. But I'll continue reading for a moment from Rabbi Yitzhak Barbanel. He writes, one of the things women would do, he says, gufan They would raise themselves by wearing literally high or large shoes. This is a clear reference to what we would call high heel shoes. We all know, any honest person knows and will admit that uh, the whole idea of uh, very high heeled shoes worn by some women is entirely connected to uh, drawing attention to themselves, either because of the sound that the heels make when walking, or because of the fact that it, it raises their posteriors in such a manner which is judged to be um, alluring, which is something which was, by the way, said to me uh, quite openly by a person I once met who was, uh, who was Jose Bichuvahi, became a from Jew after having in his past having worked in the women's uh, fashion industry and he spoke uh, very plainly about these things about why high heels were worn what was the purpose of, of these of these heels etc that it was a, an essential part of the uh, immodest look that women were trying to achieve it's interesting that Rabbi Saka Barbanil 500 years ago plus uh, writes the very same thing one of the types of garments mentioned by Yeshayahu are gilyonim. And uh, the, uh, the Shadal explains that this refers to, and I quote, levushim dakim sheinam mechasim abasar. This refers to very uh, garments made of very, very thin material that do not uh, actually hide that which is underneath. Ela miralim otho. Rather, they in fact... Uh, uh, deliberately allow it to be seen and obvious. In other words, the person's uh, body and limbs are quite plainly seen beneath these garments because they're so thin. This uh, reminds me of uh, what Rambam writes 
in his Hoth De Oth, Perak Habishi, the fifth chapter, speaking about the proper way for Tamit uh, Hachamim, uh, that means any Torah Jew, any Ben Torah, how he should dress, Rambam writes here in Halachat Teth, that a person, he's talking about a man here, and he's talking about any Ben Torah, any, any Jew who uh, understands anything at all about the spirit of, of the Torah and, and its purpose and, its, and what is proper and what is not proper. He says a person should not wear clothing uh, which is such that uh, his body, his limbs, etc. are visible underneath the garment. Like the very, very thin linen garments that many people here in Egypt, where Rambam uh, lived at, at this time, uh, when he wrote these words, as he says, as I wore him in Egypt. We all know that this is the exact opposite of what is done today by many people, men also, unfortunately, but particularly we're referring here to women because it is the way of, of the world, it is the nature of things, that uh, modesty is, is more the domain and more relevant and more uh, potentially problematic when it comes to the behavior of women. And it also doesn't only debase the woman herself who chooses to dress in such a fashion, it debases the Roshut Harabim, it debases the street, the road, the uh, public place in which she uh, walks in such a manner, and it causes a debasement and a deterioration of human society, of Jewish society, particularly we're referring to here, in general. And this is exactly what Yeshaya was referring to. People who choose to wear uh, clothing that deliberately uh, covers without actually covering, or nowadays one could even go further and say simply that people have chosen, have decided it's not necessary to cover very much at all. Uh, people who choose to wear, women who choose to wear mini skirts and uh, very short sleeves or sleeveless clothing, etc., uh, etc. Et we all know that today these types of dress, this form of behavior is a major facet of current Western culture, which is of course a culture in decline in the process of deterioration. Uh, it is spinning out of control and will lead to further debasement and animalistic uh, behavior. There, we already see this quite plainly and this is an ongoing process and it is an, uh, unfortunately uh, almost inexorable and inevitable that it will result in the uh, complete collapse of, of Western civilization as we know it. It has already caused uh, tremendous uh, deterioration in, in terms of moral standards and its impact is, is on the rise. The impact of this kind of behavior and the acceptance of this kind of behavior is on the rise. And this is exactly why we find people, some people, Jews, who say that this is perfectly normal, it's perfectly all, all right. As someone wrote to me not long ago, uh, why do I claim, he wrote, that uh, women should not wear pants? Asking if the pants were designed for women and not for men, there's no issue of uh, kligeve, no, there's no issue of a woman wearing a garment designed, intended for a man, so what's the problem? The very fact that someone could ask such a question, what is the problem? That exactly is, that itself is the problem. Uh, I could mention, of course, uh, that uh, I would be interested to know if this person or anybody else knows of any posik, any serious halachic authority who claims that it is correct and permissible for a Jewish woman to wear pants. The fact that someone has to explain this is, re uh, is really uh, quite stunning. I can mention here that uh, a good friend of mine once asked Hagaon Arab Shlomo Zaman Oyerbach said, "Sal, why uh, he, Rav Oyerbach, and others wore uh, long uh, suits with long jackets, not the kind of uh, standard suit that people wear today, but um, a long coat or jacket which which goes down roughly to the knees or even more, even longer." And his response was, Rav Shlomo Zaman Oyerbach's response was 
כי זה מסתיר את חיתוך איברי הגוף. Because by wearing a long garment, one is concealing the, uh, the obvious and uh, apparent um, delineation of the, of the limbs of the human body, and that is the purpose, as we said, we said of, of wearing clothes in the first place. And he was therefore s- stating that it doesn't, it's not just a question of covering, it's also a question of, of, uh, of not stressing and the outline of, of the human form. Not that it is something um, to, to be uh, shunned, and, and, and the, in, in all situations. No, that's not true. But it is not. There, are, there is the right place and time and forum for everything. Uh, in, in, to walk, walk around in that fashion, in a ter- terribly immodest fashion in public, is entirely unacceptable and is it's considered, uh, according to authentic Jewish norms, to be entirely uh, pernicious and something that will, without doubt, inevitably lead to moral decay and to, to uh, punishment, as, some, as Yishayel points out, that for, for these sins, for this behavior of the women of his day, Yerushalayim will pay a very heavy price and will be, and will be uh, laid waste. This basic notion of modesty is something that has been uh, unfortunately lost in the, in, by many people, and it's something that we need to talk about seriously and not shy away from. No, it is not something that is being overemphasized. If anything, it is not being discussed enough. The production of these videos and maintaining this channel demands much time and money. If you enjoyed this video, please show your appreciation and support. To make a donation, please go to www.machonshilo.org and press the PayPal button which appears on the upper right hand side of the home page. To sponsor a video or purchase Birkon Nusach Eretz Israel, please write us at office at machonshilo.org.